Hello, everybody. What's up? Welcome to week one of the LPL. Uh, I'm going to be a little uh, quick here, trying to just go through a team builder. My opponent is ready for me to challenge them, so I'm going to be as fast as I can. Um, if you didn't see the draft breakdown or the power rankings, go watch those. I'll go into more detail on both me and my opponent's teams there. But week one, I'm up against... The Cherry Grove Charizards, coached by Storm Center 17 on Discord. That is his name. He's a cool guy. Uh, so quickly go over his team. So you should have already watched the draft recap and know about my team. It's very scary. Um, there's thing powerful heavy hitters like uh, Annihilate, Mega Charizard X, uh, Sandy Shocks and Tapu Lele on the special side. Some valid support with Cryognal, Agron, very defensive Pokemon on either the special or physical side. Uh, Aerodactyl kind of hits my entire team really, really hard. His terror captains are Inteleon and Agron. Inteleon can become a Water, Ice, and Dark type. And Agron can be Steel, Rock, and Electric. So very scary. Um, not really looking forward to that. But... Um, let's quickly just dive in here, uh, looking at stats, uh, my team, out majority of my team outspeeds his team at, like, important, at important steps, Mega Beedrill outspeeds his entire team, barring any choice scarfers, um, uh, Iron Valiant outspeeds everything shy of Inteleon, which, um, Inteleon, Weavile aren't that big of threats for it. Aerodactyl is, but uh, you'll see what I have for that. Um, Iron Treads being able to outspeed the Cryogonal is very good, but more importantly, outspeeding the Tapu Lele is huge. Because Tapu Lele is a huge threat for a lot of my team. Um, and yeah, uh, his team is also very weak to fire, uh, water, rock, and ghost. Mostly ghost. Mostly ghost. And that's why I really, really, really wanted to run uh, Weakness Policy Weak Armor Seraledge Week 1. Try to, I had a set that I built that I could take a hit from uh, base 100 power Rage Fist from Annihilate and get the boosts and then reverse sweep from there. But um, it just, it was never actually showing up. It was ruined by hazards, which he was very good at getting up, and it ended up being one of the last Pokemon I ever brought in. I never got the weakness policy boosts off in Mox, so I just didn't end up running with it. Um, to quickly move on to the team that I did end up bringing, uh, you can see here we are going to start with Ladylike, the Ogre Pond Wellspring, with um, obviously with the Wellspring Mask, Water Absorb as its ability. Um, she is here as a pretty strong lead. Uh, nothing on his team wants to take an IV Cudgel, really, like, at all. Uh, and so she's just kind of here to bust things open, lead, outspeed most of his team, and just break them. I wish I remembered what I was speed creeping here. Probably the Cryogonal makes sense to me. Don't want to take, like, a Freeze Dry or something and get hit very, very hard. Uh, knock off a new turn for support. I'm not running Grass Stab, which means it is hard for me to one-hit KO the Inteleon. I actually don't think I can. But uh, I have other things to handle Inteleon. I'm not super worried about that Pokemon. Uh, with Water Absorb, it's not really super threatening to Ogre Pond. It's really only threatening if it is Choice Locked in either Specs or Scarf, and I can play around it, depending on what it locks into. And the Spikes are going to be very important for wearing down the Annihilate, hopefully as well as the Mega Charizard, once it Mega Evolves, and like the top of Lele. Um, next up, we have our Salt Vest Autobots, the Iron Treads. This is my answer to Tapu Lele. It's also really good into a few of his other Pokemon. Uh, this was a last minute addition. I haven't done any mocks with this, but I I think I originally had um, Overquill here. I had a Salt Vest Overquill, which was working, but it wasn't doing what it really wanted to. I didn't have Intimidate because I didn't want to give Annihilate the boost. Um, and so it wasn't really taking hits well on either side. This takes hits a lot better on both sides. And with Steel Roller, like I mentioned in my um, my 
draft recap, that's going to hit really hard into the Tapu Lele or into anything else that it switches out into. Or if I just kill the Tapu Lele with Iron Head, it's going to hit really hard into something else. Um, the, the HP and Special Defense is to guarantee get uh, not get 3 hit KO by a Moonblast from Tapu Lele, so I'm guaranteed taking 4 of those, or taking 3, outspeeding, and it gives me 4 turns. Um, Rapid Spin to remove Hazards, I believe the attack investment is so that way Steel Roller guaranteed kills Tapu Lele. Then we have uh, Jingle Jangle, our Clef Key. Leftovers, Prankster, originally I had um, Air Balloon on it, the Air Balloon just kept getting popped before it ever mattered. Um, it would get popped on switch-ins nine times out of ten. So, uh, yeah, Defog, because I really don't want Hazards on my side of the field, like, at all. Um, draining Kiss and Foul Play with Thunder Wave, uh, all really... This is my answer for Annihilate. This is my switch into Annihilate. Every time I take hits like a champion from it, I paralyze it, and then I slowly whittle it down. Once it's paralyzed, it's not as big of a threat for my other Pokemon. Um, and so they can come in and kind of just finish it from there. Uh, it really hurts Trace Scarf variants because they're running Trace Scarf so they can outspeed, and then I'm suddenly having their speed. Foul play is disgusting into his team. It's very physically offensive, with Tapu Lele and Sandy Shocks being his main special attackers. He also has, like, Inteleon, um, which I guess is actually very scary as well. His Nihilape, Weavile, uh, Mega Charizard X, none of which really want to take a foul play from this thing. Uh, and I'm very willing to, especially if Nihilape is already paralyzed, sack this thing off to Mega Charizard X to guarantee to paralyze that as well let it get that Flare Blitz off, kill me, and paralyze it in return. Um, we have our Rescue the Iron Valiant, uh, holding their booster energy to make use of the Quirk Drive ability. Um, they, I believe, are speed creeping. Uh, do, 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 what would it be? I believe that is Cryogonal. Um, with the, the stats spread so that way, I am boosting the special attack. I'm running mixed offense because uh, Moonblast and Orosphere take care of like 99% of his team, except for Scolipede and uh, Tapu Lele, who Poison Jab and Fire Punch easily handle. Um, and I don't have special coverage for either of those typings. So I went with this. Um, I could have run Shadow Ball for Tapu Lele, but I Felt like Poison Jab was going to be a bit better, and I didn't have any other answer for Scolipede other than just Air Punch. Uh, we also are bringing our, of course, my favorite Pokemon in draft. I'm so glad I got to bring this week one. Uh, Savage the Mega Beedrill. Um, 136 speed with a Jolly Nature, outspeeds his entire team, max attack, the rest in HP to hopefully take a hit. Probably not, but... um. U-turn, Poison Jab, Knock Off, Drill Run. This is the standard set I mentioned in the uh, the draft breakdown. Um, it's just, it's what Mega Beedrills run. And it hits so crazy hard. Uh, it, it's, it's free damage, realistically. Clicking U-turn is free damage. Uh, and lastly, we have Ion, the Vicavolt, with Terra Steel this week. Um, with Terra Steel, I kind of... With Terra Steel and Levitate, I sit in front of the Sandy Shocks. I sit in front of the um the Aerodactyl. Can't really touch me. Uh unless it's running Fire Fang, which I don't think it will. It could, but I don't think so. Um I sit in front of Scolipede. Uh to do, do, do Papu Lele can't really break me in one hit. Just uh Rotom Mo can't break through me and like, even without full investment, I am running Modest. Um, I hit his entire team like a fucking truck. These This defensive investment is... Uh, the HP is specifically so that way I take... I have the most HP I can get while taking the least amount of damage from Life Orb. But what does that mean? Uh, Life Orb does one-tenth of your health every turn. Uh, rounded down. So, if I had 310 
if, if I had 340 HP, it would be doing 34 damage, which is the same all the way from 340 to 349. As soon as I hit 350, it starts doing 35 damage per hit. So this is the most HP I could have while doing the least, taking the least amount of damage. Um, the defense and special defense investment uh, is specifically uh, calced for certain Pokemon, like Aerodactyl, Tapu Lele, etc. And then the special attack investment was just what I had left over. Um, to make sure that I am hitting his entire team very hard, I guaranteed one shot these Sandy Shocks with Energy Ball. Uh, I think I'm actually going to probably end up leading with Lady Lake, but we'll see once we get into the actual battle. For now, I will be right back while I challenge my opponent. I'll edit this stuff out. I will actually edit this. So it's going to be a good time. And I hope you guys enjoy. All right. And we are back, ready to go for this week's matchup. Um, I'm seeing Agron. And oh, I'm not seeing Tapu Lele, which means that um, immediately my, uh, my, my Iron Treads is not as effective this week as I was thinking it might be. It did not face Scolipede at all in Mox, and Scolipede is one of those Pokemon that I was kind of worried about. Um, do I lead with Vicavolt or do I lead with Ogre Pond? I think I want to lead Ogre Pond. My opponent leads Scolipede. That's interesting. Yeah, it's bug move hurts a lot. He can also be outspeeding me here, which is not ideal. Um, I think I'm going to hard switch into Iron Treads. Iron Treads should be to take the hit pretty effectively. Um. This is Sword Stance Speed Boost. This is already terrifying. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, I have ways around this for sure, but I think I might be sacking something off here. Um, at plus two attack. It can definitely kill Iron Treads here. It, it has a chance to. Plus two attack adamant. Um... I'm just going to click Earthquake, see what he goes for. He hard switches. That's cool. That's good. All right. Um, what does Aerodactyl want to do to my Iron Treads here? He's Choice Banded Adamant. In, like Worst case scenario, Earthquake still doesn't kill me. Iron Head does kill him. So I think I just click Iron Head. Yep, I take that. He's Life Orb, and he's dead. Cool. That was a terrifying Pokemon out of the way. Awesome. Um, all right, now we have Annihilate. I don't like seeing this. I think I always hard switch to Clefki here. He goes for the bulk up. I am going to Thunder Wave. Hopefully I don't miss. He could go to Sandy Shocks here, who would be immune, but okay, that's good. He goes for Fire Punch. Ooh. I can take another one, even with him at plus one here. And let's actually find out what set this is from that damage. So I'm back after doing some calcs. Um, his fire, he pretty much has to be no attack investment for that little damage on the plus one fire punch. So I think I'm going to go for the draining kiss, uh, get some health back, and see what he goes for. If he hits me, if he sets up again, he should be increasing the damage of my foul play. Um, so that's what I'm going to go for. I'm not really scared of the Rage Fist, even if I boost it up. Um, I can take another one here. He's Leftovers. So... I think from here... Uh, da, 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 da. How much does Ogre Pond take from this Fire Punch? Not a lot. You also don't kill in return. Depending on his investment, I can actually 
Probably gonna cut this out again. How much was the draining kiss doing? Draining kiss is doing about 25% each time, which means he's less especially defensive and likely more physical. There's actually no special defense investment if he's max HP. All right. Yeah, that's that's in range there. That's a low roll, but it's in range. Um, which means that Ogre Pond isn't doing much. Uh, what about Rescue? Rescue's taking the hit and guaranteed killing in return. Is it worth the potential burn? Or is it worth just sacking off Klefki here? I think I want to sack off Klefki here. I get the crit. Uh, Rage Fist kills. Alright. That was actually really good that I didn't switch there. Um, so now I go to Mega Beedrill. Uh, do, do, do. I actually didn't calc this. I hope that I can kill here. Um, I don't actually kill here, do I? I don't actually kill here. Oh no. It's like... I don't actually kill here. Oh, I'm a fucking idiot. I'm a fucking buffoon. He has to go for Fire Punch here to kill me, though. I'm a buffoon. Um, yeah, that does literally nothing. He has to go for Fire Punch here to kill me. So I think I can safely go to... I can sack off... Autobots, because it doesn't really matter here. Oh, I don't like this at all. I think I sack off Autobots. He went for Drain Punch. God damn it. Okay. This should kill. Like, th this should 100% kill. He has next to no switch ins. Um, I can actually. I could predict and go for Fire Punch on the Scolipede, who will likely be coming in. Um, Scolipede doesn't actually even die to a Fire Punch. It does die to Moonblast plus Fire Punch, though. And it has... Poison move, poison jab, we'll say. It has a chance to kill, but it's... Yeah. I think I can just safely go for that. Okay. Let's see what my opponent goes for. Inteleon. Do I outspeed this Inteleon? He might be choice scarfed. But, uh, if... Oh no, he outspeeds me regardless if she's max speed. Okay. And she definitely kills with a Hydro Pump. He probably also... Well, if he's specs, he probably also does a lot of damage with Air Slash. Yep, he guaranteed kills with Air Slash, so that's a pretty safe play. I think I have to go to Ladylike, though. Yep. Cool. Alright. Um... And I think I click knockoff here. I don't want I don't want any of his Pokemon having items. Yep, that works. Get rid of that Rocky Helmet. Cool. Rocky Helmet implies to me that it's a bit more defensive on this Scolipede. Um do, 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 so does that damage. I only did 34%. 
which means he's not max attack adamant most likely, or he's not max speed. 66% I actually I can't kill with Ivy Cudgel here. So I think I'm U-turning. Yep. Out into Ion. He gets poisoned by the poison jab. That's cool, bro. I'm just gonna click roost. Uh it means I can't it means I can't be statused in any other way, which is fine. Um I'm just gonna terra steel roost here. I wanna get my terror off. Oh, he went for the rock slide. Of course, I flinch, which sucks. Oh, but I don't think he can touch me, which means I think he has to switch out. He has poison jab, rock slide, sword stance. I don't think he can have a fourth move that can touch a steel type with levitate. He could have earthquake, but he's just going to set up spikes. Okay, I mean, cool, I guess. Um... I'm not mad. I could kill with Volt Switch here. I think that's what I'm going to do. And just go to Savage. I may as well. He goes to Agron. He's not on a balloon. Which... Do, do, do. Agron... Uh, if it's specially defensive, I I, just, I still do nothing. So I'm not sticking around here. Um, I'm just bouncing back to Ion, who takes that head smash like a champion and can uh, roost it off. He is Rockhead, though, which is interesting. He's probably going to Trastalize here. He didn't on the Inteleon, which makes me think that this was his planned Terramon. He forgot about Levitate. Unfortunate. Um, I'm going to roost again because I want as much health as I can get. Vicvolt might actually get all the kills here. <laughs> um, so I think I just click Energy Ball. I think I just click Energy Ball until he dies, and that's four kills for Vicavolt, which is insane. Uh, getting a message about a different battle. Uh, crit Head Smash, of course. Well, now we'll just start clicking Energy Ball until we win. Um, he's not Trasalizing here, which to me means that I do just kind of win. Oh, he switches in Sandy Shocks. This is super dead. Uh, yeah, I think between Mega B Drill and... Um, between Mega Beedrill and Iron Valiant, I do just win from here. Mega Beedrill outspeeds Inteleon as long as I don't throw it away. And Iron Valiant outspeeds and kills this Agron pretty much every time. Um, it's unfortunate that I couldn't... I could save... I could save this. Um, how much does Iron Valiant take from a Terra Rock head smash? How much... I haven't been doing the calc, so I don't know what his set is, but I'm going to assume max attack adamant. Terrorock, head smash. Um, yeah, I, I can take this. And... and kill with Aura Sphere after. Play for differential. Um, kind of have to. All right. We wait to see what my opponent does, but I'm pretty sure I do just win here. Um. Yeah, we played really well, Storm. This was a really scary game. Uh, it didn't feel like a four zero.
but I think that's what it's going to end up being. So I, I go to I go to Ogre Pond here because I imagine he's going to go for yep, water move. Click knockoff to remove any items, and then uh Ivy Cudgel can probably kill half can I Ivy Cudgel kill now? Can I put him out of his mercy? Uh, misery. Inteleon. Uh, Ivy Cudgel doesn't kill here, so I should knock off first, then Ivy Cudgel. GG's. You've played really well. Our team scared me. Did. Nah. Feel like a 4 0. All right, that is the battle, guys. Um, I hope you all enjoyed watching as much as I enjoyed playing. I got that for a win there. Uh, Storm, like I said, did play very well. He had a very scary team. Uh, not bringing the Tapu Lele was probably one of the best decisions he could have made against my team. Um, so yeah, that that it is what it is. I hope you guys all have a good one, and I will see you in the next one.